Fun, fast and uh, fierce. Uh, the sport's really developed over the last few years really. Um, I think it's vital that that, that continues to happen. Um, you can see from today, you know, the girls are enjoying playing competitive sport uh, and that's vital really. The, the appetite is already there. People are wanting to do it, they're, they're wanting to, to give it a go. I think we have to get away that it's women's rugby. It's rugby played by women. It's the same as the men. It's just at a completely different stage and it's the opportunity to learn from the men what worked with them. But at the end of the day, it's rugby played, played by women. It's the same as men's rugby. Um, same, tack like you're still tackling, you're still um, smashing each other. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just a game of rugby, whether it's competitive or you're just doing it for fun, it's just passing the ball out and scoring for your team. I think society changes and society has changed over time and we are where we are, where we've got a fantastic game which is now being pl played by all parts of society and I think that goes throughout, throughout rugby. My family supported me when I played rugby and I think you can see today from the crowd the amount of people that here that are their family that support them, they're taken to games um, from cleaning shirts, boots, you name it. It's a, it is a family game. I started playing at the age of about five and both my dad plays rugby and my brother played rugby at that time. So because they were both into it when I was younger, I just said to my dad, can I play? It's just such a good way to make best friends for life. It's such a good way to gain confidence. And I've learned so many skills from it. That's all I can really say is that I absolutely love the game. I think it's a powerful game. It teaches girls a lot about respect and being, being in a team and how to use teamwork. Um, and I think it's a good game that more people should get involved in. You get a lot of stereotypes. Uh, you that um, you have to come over. Uh, in the past I've been, obviously you get called like manly and stuff like that, but you, you soon come over them. Now for me the challenges are um, travelling, because women's are reason as big as men's would be. Um, you, I find that all the camps that I go to are all down south, so it's a challenge for not only parents to take them there and back, but also the time, so they have, to, they have to take time out of work. And For some girls it's taking time out of school, and it's just like juggling the school and rugby life. The ultimate for a club would be to have five teams, a women's first and a second team and the three age groups for girls, that would be the sort of the, the biggest offer a club. But in terms of every club offering women and girls rugby, I, I think that's some way off. Um, not every club offers, offers junior rugby, there are plenty of clubs that just offer men's rugby. So we've got to get the offer right and we've got to support the clubs that are, are ready to take that next plunge. Predominantly we've had two really, really strong clubs. And now we've got lots of different clubs, different schools coming together. You're seeing players from all over. Um, and, and that's a challenge in, it, in itself. Um, but then from the summer programme, we then again had the, the trials um, and it's the same criteria. And then the girls are selected from, from that. And we're getting in a position now where we could actually have two, two squads at each age group. I think what we've seen over the last three to four years in terms of the growth of the game, going from sort of 15,000 um, participants of women and girls playing rugby union uh, up to 25,000 now, and the next target up to 50,000 in the next three years, that first of all shows that the appetite, both from within the game and from without, without outside the game, is there. So if we can realise that in the next four years, to have 50,000 females playing contact rugby, I think that's a statement in itself. I think it's in a good place. I think we need to, the RFU um, need to be careful that we're not running before we've walked and we've got the foundations right. I think the news about the Premiership is phenomenal, um, but I think we need to be careful to do it in, in stages rather than going, yeah, we've got the money, we've got this, we've got that, and, and plunge it all in. Let's do it right, let's do it well. 
think the media need to um, be a lot more behind it. We had uh, Women's Sports Week where there was amazing amount of coverage. Get past Women's Sports Week and you're like, oh, well, what, what happened? Where is everything? Um, and, and I think it's that consistency and getting the message out that will, that will help attract even more players in. But it's not just players. We need referees. We need coaches. We need volunteers because they are the backbone of making rugby teams. Oh, three dogs off the ball. Oh, <laughs>